Today is the day for one of my absolute favorite seasonal videos I do here on my channel, and that is my Dollar Tree Cricut Blanks. I've got 20 new projects for you that you can customize for both fall and Halloween. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney, and on this channel, I love to share DIYs and budget home decor. So if you're new, be sure to hit subscribe so we can be craft buddies. And a huge thank you to my craft buddies that come back week after week to DIY with me. I also want to thank Upside for sponsoring today's video and supporting Whiskey and Wit. We'll talk more about them in a little bit, but first, let's get into the projects. Throughout this video, you will see me using my Cricut Maker 3. This is just my go-to machine, but you do not need a maker for any of these projects. You could do them all on a Joy or an Express explore any level so don't worry when you see the maker you do not need a maker for any of the projects today our first blank is going to be this round door hanger you could also use a pizza pan if you can't find this you could either spray paint the pizza pan or you could stain or paint this wood i'm staining mine in early american by minwax then we're going to add some fall fun color to this so i'm taking some masking tape taping off about center and i'm using this paint i just recently got at michael's the color is called spanish tile i'm loving the gorgeous hues of orange for fall it's a little bit of a burnt orange so i love it once i finish painting i am peeling the tape right off so it has no chance to seal to my sign and then i'm cutting out some leopard print so so I have this saved over on my Cricut page which I will link down below. I have now learned how to use it. I can share Cricut designs if it is a Cricut image. I just can't share projects with you guys if I've uploaded stuff, which is kind of a pain, but it is what it is. So I sized this to 11 and a half inches wide and cut it to a circle, which again, that will be over in that project. I'm applying it and I like that it overlapped just a little bit to the stain. It's not a perfect fit. I liked that, but if your OCD is going to bother you, then you can definitely trim it before you put it on. And then I'm adding the words, hey there pumpkin. This is another Cricut Design Space file. I cut this to 10 inches wide on just some white vinyl. All my supplies will be linked down in the description so you can find all that. My favorite vinyl, transfer tapes, machines, all the things. And then to finish it off, I'm adding just this striped ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby and tying a bow, hot gluing it to the top. And then I just fold the ends together to dovetail them. So you just cut at an angle to get that pretty finish. This looks so great on top of my wreath that lives on my front door. It's a nice way to make these Dollar Tree circles look a little bit more full. And to get a wood cutout circle like this for $1.25, in my opinion, is a great deal. So keep your eyes peeled for those. If not, like I said, you can use a pizza pan too. If you want something even more festive, you can grab a pumpkin shape cutout. Do the same thing with the stain and the paint. I decided to do some fun arrangements with the tape here. I did kind of a slight diagonal line. I also did one with a sharp diagonal across the center. And then I cut both of these files to 10 inches wide. I used the Hey There Pumpkin. Again, I just cut two of those and a Fall Vibes. Both of those are in design space. And these are great for signs or hanging within wreaths as well. They go together really easy and super cheap. You guys know me, I love these arrows and as long as Dollar Tree will sell them, I will keep creating files for you guys. I'm doing one in that really pretty Spanish tile color and then this is just a pumpkin colored chalk paint. We're gonna do one fall and one Halloween. The first one we're gonna do in white vinyl is for fall. Both of these will be over on my blog. And as we're going through this video, look for the little tag that you see here up in the left and I will let you know which files are free on my blog and if not, where I got them. I'm cutting these to 11 inches wide and then the height will size for you just fine. I'm using my paper transfer tape from Expressions Vinyl to apply it just so I don't peel up any of that paint. It's a super low tack transfer tape, which is great. It's going to pick up your vinyl, but not anything else, which is awesome. I kept it super generic with Franklin County, but you could do something similar with your own county on there. Super fun with a chunk of pumpkins. And I also did the Sleepy Hollows Dead and Breakfast. Be sure to book ahead. Get it? <laughs> It might be a super cheesy dad joke, but I like it. I got a kick out of it. And both of these are super cute and easy to put together. Okay, you guys, so if you saw this at a market for how big this sign is, it would easily be 50 bucks, maybe more. And I'm gonna show you how I made it for so, so, so much cheaper. 
So you're gonna go to Dollar Tree and you're gonna grab yourself some foam board, whether you want white or black. You can grab some of Dollar Tree's wood pieces like this or do what I did and go to Home Depot. You can get these one by two common boards for under three bucks a piece and you only need one piece per sign. So with everything all included, it's under five bucks in supplies. I'm gonna lay down my piece of foam core and put my piece of wood on top to measure it across the long side. Then you can either cut it by hand with a miter box like I'm showing here, or if you have a saw, you can use that. I decided to use my saw because I was in a hurry this day. I had a bunch of projects to get done for you guys for this video. Once you've got the top and bottom cut, measure the piece in between and cut that so it fits right in like a puzzle. And once that's in there, cut yourself a fourth piece and then your frame is good to go. I gave it all a really good sand with my power sander, but again, you could do this by hand. And I'm staining the outside of both signs, the Early American by Minwax, but you could paint or stain. I just like the look of the wood. Then with my frame on, I measured the inside of the space where I needed my decal to go. And I ended up having to slice it up within Cricut because I could not cut it out on its own. So I went through and did the slice method to do this. Now I've went into depth on a ton of Cricut things on previous videos. So to keep it rolling here, I will link that down below if you're not familiar with how to slice something larger than your mat will allow. So head over there. I did one for Christmas last year and I will show you how I cut these pieces. But basically you're just then piecing it together like a puzzle. I put my leaves on first and use a staple gun to attach my top piece of frame so that it would sit where I wanted it to. Then I lined up the two sides, stapled those in, and you wanna make sure you give yourself enough staples so then that way it is holding tight. Once I got my entire frame on, I applied the words at the bottom so that I knew that would be centered within the two sides. So it says, and all at once, summer collapsed into fall. This is a free cut file over on my blog so you can take it, import it, size it, and then slice it down. And like I said, I will link the instructions down below. Now, if you have a little bit of overhang like I did, just go through with an X-Acto knife, clean it up, and you are good to go. These are great for mantles, vignettes, little console tables that you have, and you are gonna save literally so much money. You would not know that it's foam core, that wood on the outside spending a little bit extra it makes all the difference. And you can also do a Halloween twist on this like I did. This is another tongue-in-cheek funny thing. I saw it on Etsy and I knew I had to put this on something. So another free cut file for you so you can recreate this. I also love these candles that I recently got on Amazon. It really adds the spooky vibe and the look of flame to my vignettes without having to worry about lighting my signs on fire. This next one is super easy, but it's gonna go really well with a pie DIY I did in a previous video. So I grabbed this frame. You can use any frame though that you want. I just liked the outside of it. I pulled out the piece of glass and cut out this free file to seven and a half inches wide. I weeded it out and applied it with just some regular transfer tape to the center of my glass. And I wanted to make sure it was gonna fit within the frame. So I laid that down to help kind of spread everything out. Then I applied it. I had to use a little bit of extra care when peeling it off the glass because it didn't stick great, great the first time, but I just took my time and it ended up sticking great. Now to get it to stay back in the frame without the backer, we are going to just put some hot glue in the corners and this is going to be all good to go. I love how this looks with my wood pie slices. I did this in my recent fence picket video, so if you'd like to make the set, head over and check out that video. Are you loving these budget-friendly DIYs? Well, if you are, I'm gonna venture to guess that you also love saving in other areas of your life too. That's why I wanted to tell you about this app that I have been loving lately. It's called Upside. It's a free app that's a must-have for anyone who buys groceries, gas, or dines out. I personally use Upside to earn cash back on my gas that I'm gonna buy anyway, so it's really a no-brainer. In my experience, the app is super simple to navigate and really easy to use. First, you'll find your offer, and I'll search nearby eligible businesses based on my location. I love this feature because it helps me find eligible gas stations even when I'm not near my house. I'm gonna claim the one that I want, so let's pick this nearby BP, 10 cents back per gallon, and then you have a window to claim it, and you'll see that right there in the blue box. Next, we're gonna head to the gas station, check in, and pay as usual with a debit or credit card. Snap and submit your receipt and you'll get paid. Seriously, it's that simple. And I can cash out anytime in a variety of ways, whether that be direct deposit, PayPal, or opt for an e-gift card for brands like Amazon and Home Depot. 
I'm super excited to use my cash back towards Christmas gifts this winter. And did I mention that this app is free? To get started, download the free Upside app on either the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. When signing up, be sure to use my promo code WIT and you'll get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. We're gonna grab another one of those wood rounds and this time we are going to fill the holes at the top with wood filler. I use plastic wood, but you could use whatever wood filler that you have. I just want this to look like a regular circle, not something that needs to be hung. Let it dry, sand it down, and then I gave mine two coats of white chalk paint. Once that was done, it was time to cut out my decal and I've wanted one of these signs for a long time. It's great for both fall and Halloween and it is this man in the moon face. Now I was able to kind of create my own stencil of what I wanted. So this is available over on my blog. I cut it to 11 and a half inches wide. So I had a little bit of a border and I'm just kind of cutting as I go here so I don't have to weed the entire thing at once. Once it was all weeded, I'm just taking some paper transfer tape because I don't want to rip up the paint I just put down. And then I'm going to apply this. Now I used matte vinyl so it wasn't too shiny. It gave a nice look and I'm not worried about sealing it, but if you want to, you can. I'm just gonna use it inside. Then from that pie frame, I'm just pulling off the back kickstand, gluing it onto a piece of a wide popsicle stick. And then I'm gonna glue it on the back so this thing will sit up if I don't have anything to lean it on. This is how I would style it for Halloween, and you can also style it with just pumpkins and some fall colors for harvest. Now what about these trendy fun bats? You see these everywhere and the sets can range for 15 plus dollars. Well, here's how you're gonna make it for under a dollar. Grab yourself some black poster board, which is 79 cents at Dollar Tree. And we're going to apply it to our mat, whether that be a 12 by 24, or you could also use a 12 by 12. We're gonna cut it down so it will go into our machine and we're gonna find a image of a bat that you like either on Google Images and upload it or you can use a Cricut image like I did here. You're gonna do a bunch of different sizes depending on your space and then cut it on the poster board setting. We're gonna peel back our mat like this just to get rid of all of the outside pieces and then I'm just carefully using my scraper tool to peel off all of my bats off the mat. Then to hook them on the wall, my secret is to use this clear gift wrap tape, put a little roll of tape on the back body of your bat, fold up the leaves just slightly, and you can stick it right on the wall. The tape also makes it really easy to reposition. I like to start with the big bats and then work my way to the smaller ones to kind of fill the holes. And you kind of want to give yourself a starting point so it can all kind of extend from there. So for me, that's going to be this pumpkin. I added a couple of my smaller bats to the pumpkin as well as the pumpkin to the right, that white one. So it kind of looks like they're all coming up out of this vignette. You can also take your rolls and cut them in half if they don't fit on your little bats, but this is a under a dollar, super cheap way to do this. You could also cut them by hand if you really want to, but that's the perk of the Cricut is being able to cut these out super quick and have them all match in a variety of sizes. Now, speaking of Halloween, you knew that I was not gonna get through this without doing some Hocus Pocus ones, right? We're grabbing one of these trays. You can either find them in the party section or at my store, it was in the home goods section. I found this file on TikTok. I bought it off of Etsy from the creator and I sized it to seven and a half inches tall. Now it was a little too shiny, so I just put a little bit of black paint. I was not super like ginger about it. I just made it kind of messy so it looked spooky. And this thing looks so great with my Pop Funkos. I always get a ton of questions on these, so I will link them down below where I got them. Now I've worked with the glass trivets before from Dollar Tree, but this time I actually wanted something that would be more of like a candle plate. And so I decided to cut out both a Halloween and a fall one. I did It's October Witches, and then also the only thing getting lit this weekend are my fall scented candles. I thought that was fitting. I just popped off the bottom little like pads to protect the countertop when you're using them and applied my decal. Now, as you can see, I cut it out mirrored so I could apply it to the back. So all you have to do is click the little mirrored button on your machine before you cut it, apply it to the back and then add back in your little 
dots as you can see here so that it sits up from the table and you're good to go. Now I have sealed the backs of these before with Mod Podge and that's usually when I plan to use them as hot plates but here I just plan on this year using these for candles so you can put the candle right on top it gives you a nice flat surface it protects your tabletop and you also have a cute little fun saying with it as well. Now you guys, I almost fell over when I found these towels at Dollar Tree. There were only two of them and they're Stitch and Weft brand. They look like they were an overstock from somewhere else, but they were perfect for fall. So I decided to screen print them with five inch wide decals and I've got a full video on how to do screen printing. So if you wanna learn how to do this process, check out that video, it will go fully in depth. I have a kit from Amazon and the reason that I decided to do this, which you could easily put heat transfer vinyl on these, but the reason I did the screen printing is so when you go to use the towels, you're not going to crunch up the heat transfer vinyl. They're a lot easier to wash and it's embedded into the fabric. So I like to screen print hand towels. I also love to screen print Dollar Tree shirts and my store has been getting in a lot more comfier, lightweight shirts as well as sleeved shirts. So this file I actually designed last year for custom t-shirts I made for everybody that went on our Salem trip. And so I decided to put this on a shirt this year, again, screen printed it. So if you wanna learn how to do this, the file's over on my blog and the link to the screen printing video will be down in the description. I love this. I did it on a maroon sleeved like baseball raglan tee and I cannot wait to wear it this fall. Now here are some options for heat transfer vinyl. I love to grab hot pads because they take heat transfer vinyl really well. I grabbed a black mitt and a brown mitt as well as a set of two just square hot pads. I measured them first and then cut out my heat transfer vinyl. All of these will be files over on my blog for you. You wanna make sure you put your shiny side of your heat transfer vinyl down and I've got a full video on how to cut with different materials if you'd like to check that out. I lined up the hand, which I cut at nine inches tall, and then I also cut a variety of different things like a leopard pumpkin, as well as its fall. I heat pressed these with my auto press from HTV Rant for 30 seconds at 320 degrees. And what I love about this is I can walk away and do something else while it's pressing. It will put the pressure down for me, and then it will allow me to just go over and grab it. It will release, so if I can't get over right that second, it is super helpful. The more I use this thing, I really like it. It saves me a lot of time, especially when I am multitasking. After I let the HTV cool, then I peeled off the carrier sheet carefully and I had all of my pieces done. So I've got a Halloween skeleton hand, I've got a fall set of hot pads, and then I also have this really pretty hot pad that says sweater weather. Another thing I love to do with heat transfer vinyls, make pillows. I decided to grab some of these bags and I actually was able to find some that didn't have any writing on them, which was huge. I decided to create this file of Happy Halloween with a lab. I saw a picture of this previously from a site selling Halloween stuff and I knew that I could make it. So if you've got a lab and want to make this, I've got this linked over on my blog. It's in the file pack. I weeded everything out as well as the little orange bucket that I cut separately and I pressed it on to my bag. I did my bag sideways so that my pillow was a little bit wider and I ended up having to kind of slice my file just a little bit to get it to press onto there. But pressing with multiple colors, you just wanna make sure that you don't over press. So under press, see if it works and then add more time because it's like baking cookies, you can't take away any time. I also did a fall one with a pretty maroon colored heat transfer vinyl as well as a black outline. I pressed both of those at the same time and they turned out really, really pretty. Then all you need to do is cut the handles off of the bag, stuff it, and then fold the ends in to glue and create a seam. Now, if you wanna sew this, you absolutely can. I just decided to use this Gorilla Glue. It holds really well and for a decorative pillow that's not gonna get much wear, it works great. If you're entertaining for fall this year, this is a must do. Dollar Tree has these really cute nameplates. The stickers come off really easily, which is a huge plus with Dollar Tree stickers. And I picked a font that I liked and cut out everyone's name for our dining room table. Now you could do names like I'm doing here and I'm just applying with some regular transfer tape, or you could 
do words like thankful, grateful, blessed, if you don't want to have individual names on there. These are great just setting in front of your plates as a play setting, but then you can also use them as napkin rings. The little sticker said, I can also be used as a napkin ring. And I was like, that's actually super cute. You just stick it through the center and you've got a nameplate and a napkin ring in one. If you want to add some fun appetizer plates to your setup, this project is for you. Now, quick disclaimer, these are not for food use. They're just to look pretty. So it's better when your table is just kind of being set for fall. I cut out these pumpkins, which is another file that I will link over on my blog for you. I cut them to four inches tall and I ended up just applying them to the center of the white plate and this looks super cute. I also decided to grab some orange plates and I cut out a variety of jack-o'-lantern faces also to four inches wide because I measured. It's key to measure when you're using your Cricut. And then I applied the cute little faces and these are ready to go for a Halloween tablescape. They also go really well with my bat napkin rings that I made for the mystery box. One of my favorite things to do for some of the bigger holidays or seasons is to get Finn a basket. So I'm calling this a boo basket. And to make his little tag, I'm just going to cut out his name like normal, but I'm going to layer some vinyl to make it look like a candy corn. So because I knew I needed his name to be six inches wide, I cut out white, orange, and yellow vinyl, and I layered it two inches apart on my mat. You don't have to do anything different with your machine, just cut over the top of it. But then once you're done, you can go ahead and weed it. And it's hard to see with the white here, but it looks like a candy corn. You can also do this with a rainbow or an ombre effect, and it's a great way to use up scrap vinyl. I'm doing this on the mat so my letters don't separate and then I'm carefully peeling back all three of the backer sheets. Cut the two names apart and then I applied them to some Dollar Tree tags. This is a pack of metal tags for this first one and the bigger one is actually a double sign that I used to apply his name so I've got two different sizes. Then a lot of you have asked what I put in these baskets. So this basket's from Dollar Tree. I also like to add in books and activities that we can do together. So I grabbed this Mickey storybook from Dollar Tree as well as a Toy Story coloring book and put those in there. I grabbed some bubbles from the Target Dollar Spot, a variety of books. I rolled up some PJs for him. And I also got him this bluey shirt at Old Navy. To finish it out, I grabbed some bath time fun. So I got some of these glow sticks in Halloween colors from Dollar Tree. And I also got these cute little rubber ducks from the Target Dollar Spot. Last step is to tie on his little basket and this thing will be ready to go. Usually I give it to him on October 1st and it's activities and things that he can wear and read throughout the month and have just a fun time celebrating and it's making memories together. I plan on making a ton of these next ones for some hostess gifts this year. Dollar Tree has some fun sized pumpkins that take vinyl really well. I'm using this one and I went into design space to create a monogram. I'm creating a letter in the height that I need for my specific size of pumpkin. I'm picking the font and then I'm also going to write out a name. So here I started to do Finn, but I ended up changing my tune and doing a last name monogram. So I switched it to a J and Johnson. For example, if I'm going to a party hosted by the Johnsons, then I'm gonna cut out the letter in white and the last name in black, just size to my pumpkin. You wanna be careful to apply within the grooves, but it was easy to apply and it took the vinyl really well. And when you're doing a name horizontally like this, you just wanna make sure that you work it into the grooves so then that way you don't have any weird bubbles. And don't worry if you need to reposition afterwards, it happens all the time. This is super cute to add to a collection of pumpkins, a fun little monogram. And also, like I said, this will be awesome for hostess gifts this year. Really easy to throw together with a bottle of wine when you're invited to someone's house. Another fun gift idea would be to grab one of these jars. They also come in clear, but I liked the orange because I was going to do a jack-o'-lantern. I measured it four inches across and cut out the jack-o'-lantern face in four inches wide. Use some transfer tape to attach it to the jar. Again, be careful with how you're applying it with the grooves. But if you take your time and go slowly, you won't have any issues with bubbling or anything like that. Then to finish it off, I added some jute twine as well as some raffia and this thing was ready to go. 
I plan on adding some fun Halloween candy. You could also add a gift card. This would be a fun little gift to send to school with your kids for the teachers as well. You could also fill it with some school supplies if you know that they like that or just a fun treat to thank them for making it through the first couple months of the year. You guys loved my Haunted Mansion sign that I recently made for my front porch. So I want to make another one. I'm grabbing this coffin sign and I'm starting by peeling off all of this stuff on the front. It looks like a pain. It kind of was a pain, but it was worth it because I got a nice clean layer of black paint on there. Two coats of acrylic paint on here. And then after that was done, I was able to go through and add on my decals. Now these I did design, the other sign I bought off Etsy, but then I was able to find the Haunted Mansion font. So I've got this little house, Welcome Foolish Mortals, which I applied to the top. And then I added the Hitchhiking Ghost down to the bottom of the sign. And it says, we've been dying to have you. Now it looked a little blah, so I ended up taking a white paint marker and doing a dot dash motif around the outside to give it kind of a faux border. It's still looks spooky but it looks more finished and i really love it it goes really great with my new skeleton friend that i got for 12 bucks from walmart in their halloween section i absolutely love these signs that dollar tree offers and you can add a plethora of different decals to them for this one i decided to use my chalkboard one and have it say welcome home pumpkin i did the orange text just so then that way it could go both fall and halloween i also did a double-sided sign on this light colored wood one one side is sweater weather and the other side is this really fun file i got from pineapple paper co for hocus pocus I ended up just tying some ribbon around the top of both of them because I removed the hanger. I wanted them to just be leaning signs. And these are great to add to different vignettes around the house. They are a fun shape and they add height to any situation or any setup that you're looking to add height to. That's gonna do it for today's video. Be sure to head down to the comments and let me know your favorite project I shared today. And also while you're down there, click the description. I will link all of my free files, where to get them, how to download them, any other files I use as well as all of my materials to make it super easy to find. Also down in the description, you'll find more information about the free Upside app. To get started, download the free Upside app in the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. And when signing up, be sure to use my promo code WIT and get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Thanks so much for watching. Hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.